Hello there, my dear students. In today's lecture of class 10 physics, lecture number 3, we're going to learn about light, subtopic, concave mirror. Learning objectives. After the end of the session, students will be able to know how to draw ray diagrams of concave mirror and uses of concave mirrors. Here are some of the reference books which I have used for this session. The nature, position and size of the images formed by spherical mirrors depend on the type of the mirror used and the position of the object from the mirror. So when an object is placed in front of a spherical mirror, maybe concave or convex, light rays from the object fall on the mirror and get reflected. The reflected rays produces an image at a point where they intersect. This is the case of concave mirror. While in case of convex mirror, the reflected rays appears to intersect behind the mirror. Hence, convex mirror always form virtual image. The formation of an image by a mirror is usually shown by a ray diagram. To construct a ray diagram, we need at least two rays whose path after reflection from the mirror are known to us. So before discussing the ray diagram, we describe the rules which the ray of light follow for forming an image. Rules for obtaining images formed by concave mirrors. A ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis of a concave mirror passes through its focus after reflection from the mirror. So you need to pay attention on this arrowhead. It is very important that you draw this arrowhead while showing the ray of light. That this is the incident ray and this one is the reflected ray. Rule 2 is the vice versa of rule 1. A ray of light passing through the focus of a concave mirror become parallel to the principal axis after reflection. So it's exactly opposite of rule 1. Rule 3. A ray of light passing through the center of curvature of a concave is reflected back along the same path. Now this happens because it strikes the mirror normally or perpendicularly. Even if a ray of light passes through this principal axis as center of curvature lies on the principal axis, it will reflect back along the same path. Now students usually make mistake here uh, the mistake is that they pass the light from the focus and they replace back the same. Now, as the previous rule suggested that when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes through the focus. Now, when a ray of light passes through the focus, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. The mistake which student does here is that, that it replaces back. So, this mistake you need to all of you need to avoid it. A ray of light incident at the pole of a concave mirror gets reflected along a path such that angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. In this case, the principal axis itself acts as a normal. Point to remember, in all the rules that we have studied up till now, the law of reflection are followed. The incident ray is reflected in such a way at the point of incident that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incident. In the last lecture, I have shown you how a ray diagram is drawn using a compass. In this lecture, we will be using protractor to draw a ray diagram as it saves little bit of time. But let me tell you 
that using a compass since it gives us an exact center of curvature gives you an accurate reading but we can use a protractor as well as it saves some time and which will be helpful during exam. So these are the steps involved for drawing a ray diagram. First we will draw the curve part using a protractor. After drawing the curve part using protractor at this exactly 90 degree we will mark a point P. From point P we will draw a principal axis. For drawing a principal axis I will make use of scale. I will keep the scale exactly at point P and I will draw a line. After drawing the principal axis we will place the scale in such a way that so that we can mark point C and F. Here I am taking the radius of curvature to be the 6 cm. That means CP will be equal to 6 cm and the distance of the focal length, the length will be 3 cm. Here you can either take 6 cm or 8 cm to be the center of curvature. Here you can avoid taking an odd number to be your radius of curvature just because if you just for example if you take 7 cm to be the radius of curvature then your focal length will be 3.5 cm. So while marking down the focus point you might make mistake there. So just to avoid it we will take any even number to be the radius of curvature. So here I am taking 6 cm. So CP here is equal to 6 cm. And FP is equal to 3 cm. Don't forget to draw the oblique lines which indicates it's a concave mirror. For all the case of concave mirror, we will proceed with the first four steps compulsory. As the image formation of a concave mirror depends on the distance of the object that is placed from the mirror, so the fifth step will be placing the object on the principal axis at different position. To explain the image formation by a concave mirror, I am making use of this simulation. The link of this simulation is posted in the description box. So the rules that we have studied for the formation of ray diagram by a concave mirror, we will go one by one and check the rules on this software. So first rule said that when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes through the focus. You need to pay attention on this arrowhead. This arrowhead indicates the incident ray while the other arrowhead indicates the reflected ray. Now the second rule states that the opposite of this rule, when a ray of light is passing through the focus, is parallel to the principal axis. The third rule states that when a ray of light is passing through the center of curvature, reflects back along the same path. Fourth rule when a ray of light is incident at the pole, the principal axis acts as a normal. So all these rays are coming from the object and we use this rays, any two rays 
to construct gray diagram for locating the image formed by a concave mirror. When an object is placed between the pole and the focus point of a concave mirror. So we can place this object anywhere between the focus and the pole of a concave mirror but make sure that we do place this very near by focus point or very near by pole. So we are keeping somewhere here. The, so this indicates the object. So when a first, I'm using force rule, when a ray of light is paired to the principal axis, it passes to the focus. The second ray I'm taking is from the center of curvature. So when a ray of light passes from the center of curvature, it reflects back along the same path. Now if you observe this, these two rays, this will never meet or never intersect in this area. And if you try to trace it back, you will find that the intersection point is behind the mirror. So this image that we obtain is a virtual image as the intersection point is behind the mirror. To understand this construction, we will label the object and each part, each point of the of this diagram to understand in a better way. So AB here represent my object. So first ray of light is that is parallel to the principal axis. That means ray AD. AD is a ray is parallel to the principal axis. So this ray passes to the focus. The second ray I'm taking is from the center of curvature, hits the E point of the mirror and reflects back on the same path. So when this two ray is retraced back, we'll observe that the intersection point is behind the mirror, which is represented by a dotted line. Hence a virtual image is always represented by a dotted lines. So the image form is behind the mirror, virtual and erect, larger than the object. Second case, when an object is placed at the focus of a concave mirror. So again, when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes to the focus. Second ray I will take from the center of curvature. It will retrace back along the same path. So the characteristics for this image is the image form is at infinity. It's real and inverted and highly magnified. If I observe these two rays, I'll find out that these two rays are paired with each other and these two rays will never intersect behind or at front. So we consider this to be image to be highly magnified. So I place the object at focus point. A ray of light passing through the focus, span to the span to the principal axis. A ray of light passing through the center of curvature, retest back along the same path. When an object is placed between the focus and the center of a curvature, we draw a ray parallel to the principal axis, pass, which passes to the focus. A second ray, we can use either passing through the focus or we can use a ray that is passing through the center of curvature. So it reflects back. The intersection point is the point where the real images form. So the characteristics for this case is beyond the center of curvature, since the image is formed behind C point, it's real and inverted as the image is formed front of the concave mirror. And if you compare with the size of the object, the image is larger than the object. 
So when you construct this, if you place this object between C and F, you'll find exactly that the image is larger than the object and is real and inverted. In the next case, object is placed at the center of curvature. So first we need to draw the object which is at the center of curvature. Again, we'll make use of any two rules. If you see, if it passes from the center of curvature, it will not incident the curve part of the mirror. So we will not use the ray which is passing through the center of curvature. A ray of light which passes through the focus is paired to the principal axis. And another rule I will use is when the ray of light is paired to the principal axis, it passes through the focus. So the characteristics of this image will be the object size and the image size will be same. Image will be real and inverted. And the position will be at the center of curvature. In the next case, we will place the object beyond the center of curvature. We will find that the intersection point is between C and F. So the image form is between C and F. It's real and inverted. And if we compare with the object, we will find that the size of the image is smaller than the object. So here we can make some conclusion that as I move object towards the mirror, the image form was magnified. As I move away from the mirror, the image still is magnified. As I move the object at uh, the center of curvature, the image size was equal to the object size. Beyond the center of curvature, the image size started reducing. So we can say here that if I keep the object at infinity, the image formation will be very close to focus point. Uses of concave mirrors. Concave mirrors are used to concentrate sunlight to generate high temperature in solar furnace. So here you can imagine that the sun is at infinity and this reflector, the rays that are coming from the sun converge at a point and at that point there is a cooker containing food placed at the focus of the reflector. So this cooker is at the focus point. So this can be considered as a sixth case where object is kept at infinity and all the rays of light that are coming from the object converges at a point and that point is said to be a focus point. So another example here you can take is of uh, this dish TV. If you have seen this dish TV, uh, you might have seen that, that the shape of this dish TV is of concave. So we can consider this to be a concave uh, reflector where it converges all the signals that are coming from the space and it has been focused. So exactly at the focus point uh, there is a receiver which receives the signal. So concave mirror is also used as a shaving mirror or a makeup mirror. It is also used by dentists to see an enlarged image of the teeth. So this example can be considered for case where an object is placed between F and P. So the images that are seen here is a virtual image and a magnified image. Concave mirrors are used as reflectors in torches, car headlights and searchlight. So the bulb here is located are placed at focus point and the light that are coming from the bulb hits the reflector and the reflector guides the powerful rays to the longer distance. Image formation by a concave mirror for different position of the object. So 
the cases which you have gone through you can note it down in the tableau format check your progress by solving some questions for what position of an object does a concave mirror form a real image equal to the size of the object can a concave mirror form a virtual image of same size as the object name the type of mirror which is used by dentists to examine the teeth of a patient give a reason where will the image of an object be formed by a concave mirror if the object is placed at an infinity there is one another question which i would like to ask here all of you you can write the answer in the comment section what is the minimum distance between the object and the image formed by the concave mirror that's it for today if you have any doubt regarding the topic you can post it in the comment section until next time stay indoors stay safe thank you